the, the thing in this case that actually um, kind of swayed the jurors toward this guilty verdict, if you had to point to one thing? I, I, if I had to point to one thing, sitting through six days of testimony, more than 20 witnesses, and some of these days were long days, I really do believe it was the testimony of Samantha Huber from the Orleans Parish Coroner's Office who testified about the gunshot wounds in Will Smith's back. She gave a very good description of that to the jury and went through that. She's a seasoned pro at testifying at trials. I also thought Bruce Brueggemann, the NOPD detective, stood firm. He said this was a homicide from the beginning. John Fuller really went after him on the stand, but he never wavered. And I just keep coming back to this. Jason Napoli and Laura Ken Canazero's closing arguments, especially the rebuttal by Canazero, the last thing the jury heard, I really think that sold them. Obviously, they deliberated a lot for this, but I think those are key points for me. I know you were here every day, too, Rob. All the lawyers in the courtroom, after the fact, we all were saying that um, Laura's um, clothing was wonderful, it was great. And we all said the same thing, that this case is going to be a second-degree murder or manslaughter for sure. As I said, I thought it was second-degree. The jury came back manslaughter, but her closing argument to rebuttal was put this case together and the jury went in with that. Because look, there were a lot of moving parts. This prosecutors even admitted that a lot of the stories didn't match up from a lot of the witnesses, prosecution and defense witnesses. But they told people get to the core of this. They felt that Will Smith was walking away and Cardell has opened fire, shooting him in the back, and the jury has agreed. Gina, I know the DA is having a press conference tomorrow, but it's my understanding he just released a statement to you moments ago. Absolutely, Travers, and we'll put it on the screen for our viewers. We saw that the prosecution team didn't have any comment leaving the courtroom, but this from District Attorney Leon, uh, from the District Attorney's spokesman, Christopher Bowman. The District Attorney is gratified by the verdict. He believes that it was a victory for the Smith family as well as the citizens of New Orleans. The District Attorney was in his office as the verdict was returned. On the account of this late hour, the district attorney's office will hold a press conference to answer any questions on Monday. The office will have no further comment this evening. We know that there are still lots of questions for uh, the prosecutors in this case, so certainly uh, that press conference tomorrow, tomorrow we will be paying close attention to that. We also did get a comment from the defense. Uh, he didn't have much to say as he was leaving the court. Our reporter Natalie, he was there. Here's John Fuller uh, comments or reaction after the verdict? Uh, no comment. We're going to respect the jury. We're going to respect the jury's verdict and respect the, uh, the pain that both families are experiencing tonight. And uh, we'll regroup tomorrow and see what the next approach is. Continue to pray for all families uh, and continue to pray uh, not just for them going forward, but, going, but pray for uh, their healing in this terrible time uh, for the Smith family and for Cadell's family. And y'all have a good night. Thank y'all. That was John Fuller, a man who had a lot to say prior to the trial of his client, Cardell Hayes, kind of limiting his comments tonight, more than likely planning his next move, trying to figure out what is the next step for Cardell Hayes. He's been behind bars since April, since the night the shooting occurred. Now, district attorney's office said because of this late hour that they wouldn't be doing a press conference tonight. Uh, they wouldn't be doing a press conference tonight, but they will have one tomorrow. Our reporter, Natalie, he is out there on the scene as well. Natalie, what can you tell us? It's just a positive moment right now in the city. You happy with the results? Uh, happy. My friend is not, you know, he's not here. So happy is not a, uh, a, a, a great choice of words. There's nothing really to be happy about. Um, I think, you know, for the family, um, it helps move closer to having some uh, closure in a, uh, a bad situation. And um, I'm just proud that the jury was able to um, convict on some charges. And it gives the family opportunity to begin the uh, healing process of, you know, putting a real, real sad day uh, behind them. Uh, nothing more. My friend is not coming back. A community leader is not coming back. A father is not coming back. Um, so ultimately, uh, we have to just take the time and look at ourselves and understand that uh, we have to love one another. And, uh, you know, without love, you know, what do we really have? So uh, I leave here today feeling positive about the city. Uh, the jurors did a wonderful job, uh, at least coming back and uh, 
you know, providing a conviction. Did you talk Thank to the you. family uh, at all? Uh, the family? Um, been here all week. So, uh, provide some closure for us. All right, Gina, there you got it. It's Mike McKenzie, a friend uh, with Will Smith, used to play with him. He, he <laughs> um, obviously said that he is not happy with the convictions tonight, uh, although he says that there is some sort of justice here. There you go. He's driving away right now. Uh, as you just heard, he says it's a, a sad night for the city of New Orleans here, driving away right now. Uh, Gina, I'm going to pitch it back to you. All right, now Mike McKenzie says that, you know, sad that he'll never see his friend again. A friend is never coming back, a father never coming back, but he did commend the jury on the work that they, that they were able to do today. Mike McKenzie also says, you know, that this is closure in a bad situation. It's clearly no good outcomes here. And he ended his sound back there or interview talking about the fact that what we need in this community is more love. He pretty much said that uh, it, with this verdict, uh, it was a positive day for the city because uh, someone is being held accountable for Will Smith's death, but also just, um, you know, for him and for the Smith family, they'll never see their loved one again. Uh, it, it is a late hour. Part of the reason the district attorney has held off uh, holding a press conference on tonight, but this is uh, uh, something that the, the judge in this case definitely wanted the jury to continue deliberations as long as they could go. Uh, my colleague Travers Mackle still at the courtroom with our legal analyst Robert Jenkins. Travers, talk about how how the judge actually facilitated this case from beginning to end. She um, she st stuck to a, t a time frame of sorts, if you will. She did. We're talking about Judge Camille Buras, a seasoned pro at this. She's been on the bench for about 20 years. She's a former first assistant district attorney to Harry Connick Sr., the former district attorney in New Orleans and Gina. She gets rave reviews when it comes to this case. A lot of people felt from start to stop her work was rock solid. Right. She controlled a courtroom. Everybody was on time. When she said 30 minutes, everybody was back. When she said lunch was back, she um, was alert. She sustained objections. She overruled. She made sure that Cardell got a fair trial, so there's no error on her part in this matter, in my opinion. There's nothing I would think anybody could argue with when it comes to anything from the judicial side of this. And let's talk about that. It's no secret, John Fuller and these assistant district attorneys, there's some bad blood. They don't like each no, other. They, do they could get tested. There were a lot of objections, and she really did a good job of keeping all the parties in check because while everybody tried to play nice, they don't really like each other. No, they, they dislike each other, all of them. But what else the judge did, some judges, most of them would say one hour for closing or an hour and a half. She didn't put a limit. She let them go as long as they could. And you see John went four hours. So that shows you also about Judge Beer's judicial temperament. So I don't see any error, because I said it just like you did, as to what she did or any of her moves in this case. I will say this. The jury was sequestered, and she was very caring and compassionate with the jury tending to their needs, making sure they got good breaks. Also, very serious though, asking them every morning, did you read anything, look at anything? Did anyone try to approach you? That's what a judge has to do in a high profile case like this when she sequesters a jury. To make sure there's no outside influence that anyone's tried to get to you or say something about this case and they all said no. So again, she did, she did a good job. The case went smoothly and the fact of the matter is, a lot of judges would not have let judge go. I mean, John go four hours, but she did.